continuing our coverage of Stelco and its uh, impending purchase by Cleveland Cliffs. We're going to focus now on a $50 million subsidy that Stelco got from the Canadian government to create jobs and modernize its facility in Hamilton, Ontario. Our guest says the government has a poor track record on transparency for these corporate subsidies and doesn't even track jobs created versus promises made. We're joined by Franco Terrazano, Federal Director at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Thanks very much for joining us. And uh, this is a handy reminder. So $50 million went to Stelco. Um, at least some of that now will benefit a U.S. company. Well, I think this is just more proof that the government's addiction to corporate welfare is a bad gamble for Canadian taxpayers. And, you know, I think a lot of Canadians will see this news today and they'll be rightly frustrated about the $50 million handout that happened a handful of years ago and wonder, you know, what's going to happen with that money for taxpayers. But, you know, I don't think today's announcement is the real issue. I think the root of the problem happened back in 2019 when the Trudeau government made the decision to hand still. 50 million dollars because at the end of the day if this company or any other company wants to upgrade its own facilities it should use its own money not rely on a handout from taxpayers and as we fast forward today we see the federal government which is now more than a trillion dollars in debt continue to put taxpayers on billions of dollars on the hook for billions of dollars in corporate welfare all while raising taxes on ordinary Canadians and many Canadian businesses one, I mean, an interesting point you make here is the difficulty of finding out what benefit did we really get for these billions uh, if you add them up in subsidies? Well, that's because the uh, transparency from the federal government on its corporate subsidies is lackluster at best. You know, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we got records from the government, access to information records on almost 200 corporate subsidies going back to the 1990s and which cost taxpayers billions of dollars. And in almost every single one of those corporate subsidies, the government couldn't even be bothered to track whether a <laughs> single job was created. And that's according to the government's own records. So, you know, all the time you see politicians of different political stripes hold press conferences, smile for the camera, promise the moon for taxpayers, and now we find out that the government, according to its own records, can't even be bothered to track whether these corporate subsidies are leading to any jobs. What about if these projects do lead to less pollution? I mean, there's a benefit for the, the community as a whole if that happens. Well, okay, but the problem is, is that just because a company utters the word green, it doesn't give the federal government a blank check to give tens of millions or tens of billions of dollars over to private corporations. I mean, if the government wants to attract investment across the board, including for green technologies, then the way it should be doing that is by cutting taxes and cutting the regulation that makes it harder to start a business in Canada and to succeed. I don't know. I mean, you, you get surveys or, I mean, you can frame these studies in lots of ways. It depends what um, assumptions you make, but cutting taxes doesn't necessarily mean more investment. Uh, sometimes companies just pay it out in dividends or buy back their own shares. Well, let's look at what's happening right now in Canada, right? Right now in Canada, as a concrete example, we just saw the federal government hike the capital gains tax. Right. So that's going to hurt many small business owners coast to coast who have already set up shop here in Canada, who, who rely on the sale of their assets to fund their golden years or to reinvest uh, in whatever business that they might have. So at the one hand, you have the government going after Canadian businesses that have already set up shop here. And then on the other hand, uh, the government is announcing what tens of billions of dollars to multinational corporations to build EV factories like this is the complete wrong way to actually spur economic growth. Right. You have these politicians and bureaucrats in Ottawa who couldn't balance the budget of a lemonade stand. <laughs> and yet they want to and yet they want to play investment banker with our tax dollars. I mean, come on. What are they going to do, though? I mean, these investments will go to other countries. I know that they, they may well get it wrong. I mean, nobody business people get it wrong, let alone uh, bureaucrats. But they have to do something to get this kind of investment in Canada. Cut taxes cut taxes, right? Because like, let's not pretend that these corporate welfare subsidies, let's not pretend that this is just money that's falling from the sky. It's not. Where is the government getting that money? It's getting the money from Canadian businesses, successful Canadian businesses, and those that are trying to be successful. So at best, 
at best, this is a shell game. But what's more likely happening is that you're taking money through higher taxes out of the productive sector of the economy and then handing over, you know, tens of billions of dollars in some cases to select multinational corporations. So at best, it's a shell game. But in reality, uh, you have these politicians and bureaucrats who are trying to pick winners and losers when that should be left to the market. Well, I don't know. The market, uh, the market makes a lot of mistakes as well. I mean, the market makes blunders, but I, I suppose the company's betting with their shareholders' money, and the shareholders will kick management out, ultimately. Um, one last thing, and I, what about this argument, though, that the states is giving out big subsidies for electric vehicle batteries, for electric auto plants. Are we, are we not forced to match it to some extent? Well, you know, one lesson that I learned from my parents in grade school is like, just because your friend does something silly <laughs> doesn't mean that you should be doing something silly as well. And you know, a lot of Canadians, both individuals and businesses are going through a tough time. A lot of Canadians want to succeed. And at the end of the day, we've seen a lot of tax hikes coming from the federal government. And if the federal government wants to encourage our economy, it should cut red tape, cut taxes and cut out this corporate welfare.